Dame una miradita para irme ya. Dame una miradita para irme ya. Mirarme para acá, no mires para allá. Mirarme para acá, no mires para allá. Dame una miradita para irme ya. Dame una miradita para irme ya. <risa> de hierba buena al sol, señores. De hierba buena al sol, señores. Natura y chico. Natura y chico. No se meta, no se mete. Pase, pase, pase. Eh, como cantar, pase, pase, gringo. Estaba cantando can 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 ese gringo. Sí. Ya amanece y es de día. Ay, por qué amanece me voy. Ay, ay, por qué amanece. No quiero ser conocido Ni que sepan yo de eso Ni que sepan yo de eso <laughs> Singing, dreaming, and resistance among the water guardians of Cajamarca, Peru. Ominous black mountains, dawn peaks over the horizon. My name is Christopher Santiago, and I must warn you that there are some disturbing images ahead. Seven water guardians holding vigil over the Mamacocha Lagoon. In November 2011, the lucha or fight against Conga began. Conga will be the second largest gold mine in the world. Worth $4.8 billion, it is the largest investment in Peruvian history. Conga's shareholders include Newmont of Denver, Colorado, with 51.35%, the Peruvian company Buenaventura, with 43.65%, and the World Bank's IFC, with 5%. Congo will annihilate four highland lagoons, as well as rivers, streams, and wetlands composing the watersheds, which sustain three provinces and tens of thousands of people. First to be destroyed will be the Parole Lagoon. It will be turned into an open pit two kilometers across and one kilometer deep. Hundreds of water guardians meeting at the Parole Lagoon. The earth excavated from Parole will be treated with cyanide and then deposited into the Azul Lagoon, transforming it into an enormous toxic dump. Conga is expected to produce an average of 90,000 tons of waste tailings per day, every day for 17 years. In October 2012, two camps were formed to hold vigil over these lagoons. One camp was located on a hillside overlooking the Mamacocha Lagoon in the province of Walgayok, Bambamarca. The other camp was located in the province of Selendin, overlooking the Azul Lagoon. This second camp was on the Chaupe family's land. More about them in a moment. Eight cold, wet and hungry water guardians inside a handmade tent. The flag of Selendin flying in the mist over the Selendin camp.
Yanacocha Lagoon slash Yanacocha Mine before and after. Yanacocha Mine is 20 years old. The company took its name from the lagoon it devoured. The Conga mining project would be an expansion three times larger than Yanacocha. Water guardians staring in horror at the open pit mines of Yanacocha. A local newspaper headline reads, the Rio Grande is totally contaminated. Water that arrives at El Milagro water treatment plant has mercury, lead, uranium, and cyanide. The Rio Grande is now an artificial river, un affluente industrial, flowing out of long black tubes from Yanacocha, which read agua acida, or acid water. The Rio Grande is the main river of the city of Cajamarca. Peasant hands deformed by mercury. In 2000, 151 kilograms of liquid mercury spilled over a 25 mile long area, contaminating three mountain villages, including Choropampa. More than 900 people were poisoned from the spill. Peruvian National Police marching threateningly at the camera. In Peru, it is legal for the police to be privately employed by the mining company. Another law grants impunity to police who use lethal force. This was called the license to kill. A shrine to the five martyrs of water. There were two states of emergency in Cajamarca. The first came after a conflict with police up in the mines on November 24, 2011, leaving many peasants wounded, including one man who was shot in the back and paralyzed from the waist down. The people rioted and burned the mining offices in the cities of Celindin, Wasmin, and Sorochuco. The second state of emergency came after five people were killed by Peruvian National Police and military. Four in Celandin on July 3rd, 2012, and one in Bambamarca on July 4th, 2012. The youngest was 16 years old. He was shot in the head from a helicopter. The police and military occupied the city of Celandin for eight months. A restaurant filled with Peruvian National Police. Maxima Chaupe, standing before the Azul Lagoon, in her poncho and sombrero, her fist held high with dignity. I discovered that the peasants fight with the weapons they have at their disposal. Music and dance, songs, stories, dreams, jokes, and divination by coca leaf. Singing and dreaming communicate, and thus weaponize, unconscious affects, which would otherwise be impossible to express, in this way, they can express the inexpressible. Peasants put their experiences into words through ancient melodies, carnavales, huaynos, and yaravis, which date back to the Inca. Throughout the Andes, dreams are believed to tell the future. This can be defensive, making sense of traumatic experience, and also offensive, by rewriting past traumas. Singing and dreaming turn trauma and suffering into healing and strength. Maxima Acuna Atalaya de Chaupe and her family live in the heart of Conga, right next to the Azul Lagoon. The mine wants her land. They've tried to evict the family, beaten them up, burned their straw huts, killed their animals, leaving two dead sheep in the road and taking two more back to the camp to eat, sheep head soup. They've built a fence around the Chaupe's house the family often receives death threats, 
and not to mention an exhausting court case brought against the family by the Yanacocha mine, all to drive them off their land. But the family has resisted. When the miners came onto their land, Maxima's daughter Hilda got on her knees to block the machinery. The miners told the police to get her out of the way. A policeman then hit her in the head with the butt of his gun, knocking her unconscious. Thankfully, Hilda was okay, but the family's medical certificates were denied as evidence in court, while the police claimed that the family had attacked them with stones, sticks, and machetes. The police didn't have medical certificates to prove this. Maxima Chaupe sings. Yo soy una jam queñita, yo soy una jam queñita, que vivo en las cordilleras, que vivo en las cordilleras. Pasteando mis ovejas, pasteando mis ovejas, en neblina y aguacero, en neblina y aguacero. Cuando mi perro ladraba, cuando mi perro ladraba, la policía llegaba, la policía llegaba. Mi chocita lo desataron, mi chocita lo desataron, mis cositas lo llevaron, mis cositas lo llevaron. Ingenieros policías, ingenieros policías, me robaron mis ovejas, me robaron mis ovejas. Cal de cabeza tomaron, cal de cabeza tomaron en el campamento de Conga, en el campamento de Conga. Camita yo no tenía, camita yo no tenía, con pajita me cubría y con pajita me cubría y comidita no comía y comidita no comía y solo agüita yo tomaba y solo agüita yo tomaba y por defender mis lagunas, por defender mis lagunas, me atacaron a balazos, me atacaron a balazos. La vida lo voy a perder, la vida lo voy a perder, por defender mis lagunas, por defender mis lagunas. The I endings are traces of Quechua in her Spanish, what some Peruvians call the barbarism. Maxima said that she did not sing before the trouble. It was these traumatic events that led her to start singing. One time, Maxima came to Cajamarca to tell her lawyer that in the night she'd been shot at. Maxima's lawyer told me that the police had been watching the peasant camp and saw that the men had gone down the mountain. Nobody except Maxima and four women remained. They heard shots, and the women were scared. They wanted to run for it. They didn't know what to do, and a few of them began to cry. Then Maxima said, No, don't run, compañeras. We are strong. Moreover, God accompanies us, and we are going to sing. Let's sing. At first they heard the bullets, but as the songs became stronger, they forgot about the bullets and began only to enjoy the song. Maxima said, Compañera, sing! And we took each other by the hands, and we sang, and the bullets sounding. The lawyer admitted it was something when she told it. It left me, ah, we cried. Very strong, no? Truly, we were so moved, so touched. Senora Santos sings, holding a photograph of her son, who was killed by the police. Oh, my, uh... 
Caja marca, bomba marca, caja marca y bomba marca. Se llenó de policías, se llenó de policías. Diciendo que somos terroristas, diciendo que somos terroristas. Maldito hay presidente, maldito hay presidente. Malditas autoridades, malditas autoridades. Su conciencia se vendieron, sus conciencias se vendieron. Por un poco de dinero, por un poco de dinero, no nos acobardemos, compañeros. Seguiremos en la lucha, seguiremos en la lucha. Si se trata que nos maten, si se trata que nos maten, moriremos por el agua, moriremos por el agua. Y arriba la minera. A, abajo la minera, arriba nuestras aguas. Mo, tendremos que ganar con, ya con nuestra sangre y nuestras Pero vidas no haremos y defenderemos nuestras aguas con nuestras vidas y derramaremos nuestra sangre por el agua. In descending order, a dream witch, a fire witch, and a witch that sucks on a person by Guamam Poma from the colonial era. The colonial ecclesiastical authorities outlawed such dream practices, telling people in Quechua, do not give value to dreams. Dreams are lies. They are not to be valued. By valuing their dreams as a source of truth, the campesinos are defying hundreds of years of colonial oppression. When I asked Senora Santos about her son's death, she narrated it to me through a series of dreams she had before the event. When the protests started, Senora Santos dreamed that a moto taxi was passing by a cornfield. This moto had a stick jutting out, and as it passed, it rolled up all the corn that was flowering. This leads to the chilling phrase, quote, it swept up everything. She initially interprets this dream as a sign that they will win the fight, but there is an inkling of what is to come, quote, it sure did dry them all up, and they fell, all of them. The corn is, quote, all old, all broken, all dry. The second dream she again misinterprets. She saw, quote, four flags in a row on both sides of the street, little white flags with their black letters. Four groups of people gathered, quote, and the four groups hugged each other. She thought, quote, we're already winning the triumph, but I didn't realize that I was already looking at the, the, my son, who's gonna die. I'm gonna start mourning because of the black letters. When we consider that the four groups of people correspond to the four dead in Selendin, an uncanny affect manifests. Then, shockingly, in the last dream, which occurred the night before the tragedy, her arm, quote, broke, and, quote, fell on the ground, but didn't hurt. She is left precisely without a meaning, quote, my God, what's going to happen today? She asked. Many people in the Lutra spoke of dreams as omens which foretold events. Here's another example. Before the police came and attacked the Chaupe family, destroying their chosas, or straw huts, Maxima's husband Jaime had a dream in which stampeding bulls destroyed these same straw huts. Quote, they took everything on their horns. They took the wood, the straw, Nothing remained, yeah. Maxima and their children cried, quote, How are they going to do like that, these wild animals that come to destroy our home? Other dreams are empowering, strengthening their resolve to fight. Maxima finds herself surrounded by lots of people she doesn't know. They want to take her away to another place. They say, We are going. But she can't go. Quote, My shoe wasn't there. I had no sock. It seems illogical, quote, what to walk with, she asks. It is almost as illogical as the police, under command of a transnational mining company, ordering you to leave your home. Now the encounter with the police appears as a game, emphasizing the sense of unreality of the events. A mob of people hold Maxima by her arms, just as the police did. This could be read as a trace of the traumatic experience repeating in her unconscious. 
but not exactly. It is precisely her force which keeps this dream from being simply a compulsive repetition. An inner alchemy enables Maxima to transform the experience and rewrite history. In her dream, she wins. Quote, they shook me, but I didn't let myself play. In games, I beat them. Consequently, I hear a youth say, the senora has so much force because really she has beat me. He orders another person to hold her, but that's when Maxima, in her own words, quote, made force. I caught the hand of the boy and what way? I caught the two little fingers of the left hand and I tore them off. One time I asked Maxima, do you believe that dreams come true? She answered, yes, in my dreams that I have, it would be very occasional that perhaps it has not coincided. Otherwise, what I dream comes out exactly, it coincides. Some people who don't know me, who don't believe me, they said to me, no, the dream is a lie. It lies. They say, no reality comes of it. But for me, yes. As of today, the lagoons of Conga still exist, thanks to the efforts of my friends, the guardians of the lagoons. Thanks, everyone. Conga no va carajo.